I share with you this morning from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. I'm reading this morning from the Common English Bible. While Jesus and his disciples were traveling, Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him as a guest. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his message. By contrast, Martha was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meal. So Martha came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to prepare the table all by myself? Tell her to help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. One thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part. It won't be taken away from her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Jesus and his disciples were traveling. Nothing new there. It seems like when we we read the gospel lessons, this group seem to be spending a lot of time going from place to place, uh, finding a, a new town to go to. But you know, that wasn't like us going from place to place, unless of course we're playing Pokemon these days, because we do happen to do that by foot most of the time to get the exercise that it brings with us, and that's how Jesus traveled as well. Traveling by foot could become hot, dusty, and when they arrived in towns, they would, they would have to rely upon the hospitality of strangers, inviting them to come and stay. I'm just curious, when was the last time you invited a stranger to come and stay in your house? This week, anyone? In the last month? How about in this lifetime? Oh, okay, one or two in this lifetime. Thank God we got that at least. All right. Uh, But that's what they relied upon, were these these strangers inviting them. But as Jesus came and the disciples came into this one town, they, you know, things kind of went their way. Mary and Martha were there. And Mary and Martha obviously knew Jesus and the disciples. We know this because... Well, later in the story, we hear Martha call Jesus Lord. So even though we don't get a whole lot of backstory in Luke's gospel, we do know here that, uh, that these folks are known by Jesus, and Jesus knows them. So when they arrive in town, Mary and Martha, probably both of them, invite Jesus to come and stay with him. And Jesus, probably a few of the disciples... They go to Mary and Martha's house. They get there and it appears that Jesus sat down, probably in the place where they were going to eat, because in that culture you reclined at a table. You you sat on the floor and, 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 and just kind of reclined there. And others joined him around that place and and Jesus taught. Jesus shared some of his feelings or his, his teachings on the kingdom of God, on the people of God, on God's word for the people of that day. Now, sitting around the table was one of the women responsible for this group of people who were there in their house. It was Mary. Mary was, was sitting there. And she was listening to everything Jesus was telling. She was laughing at his funny stories. She was soaking up every word. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Martha went there immediately. While all the others reclined, Martha went into the kitchen and began the preparations for their meals. You could just hear that knife 
going away at the vegetables. You, you could hear her, her elbows pop, that she needed the dough and the bread. You, you could just hear them popping. You could hear, you could hear her stirring stuff and, and preparing stuff. And, and you could begin to smell smells coming to the rest of the house. Now, while all this prep work was going on, everything seemed fine. The kitchen seemed to be going just, just peachy. But all of a sudden, as she finished up the prep work, Martha looked around, and she realized she was all alone. She poked her head out the, the corner of the kitchen and looked, and there, there sat Mary around the, the table where Jesus was. And Martha begins, Martha's thinking, now what... You know, we're women. We're supposed to be serving the guest. We're, we're, oh, I bet Mary just forgot. Mary is so forgetful sometimes. She just forgets everything she's doing. She forgets what she's supposed to do. I'm sure I can get her attention. So it is at this point, about the third time, the disciples and Jesus and Mary are laughing, that, that Mary starts taking the pots and pans out of the out of the cupboards. And you know, there, there's a couple different ways of taking pots and pans out of the cupboards, right? Out of the cupboards, right? You can do it nice and quiet. Or you can make all the racket you want, rattling pots and pans as she brought them out of the cupboard, setting them down on the counter with, with, with all the force she could. You know, thinking, okay, we're getting into the cooking time here. Surely Mary's going to hear this noise. She gets the cooking stone that they use for the unleavened bread, and she, she rolls that thing as loud as she can so that Mary can't, can't miss it. And she's thinking, she'll be here. She'll be here. I know she'll be here. And she waits and waits, and then she goes back. And she peeks around the corner, and she sees Mary looking at Jesus. Well, Martha didn't have anything else to do but to get everything ready, so she starts banging those pots together, starts heaving that stone into the oven, slamming the door shut behind her, making all the racket she can, keep looking for Mary to come, nothing. Well, all the food's cooking. The only thing left to do is to set the table, and that's where everybody's setting. So Martha says, I know. I know how to do it. This, she grabs the plates, and she comes in, and she sets them down at the table. Kathunk! 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 And every kathunk, there's a pause in the conversation, okay? Every single one, the conversation pauses. But before she's done, they're laughing and talking again. Wow, so Mary has to, has to put napkins out here by everybody. So she takes her first napkin and she starts whipping that napkin into a roll. All right, she wants, she wants it all nice and tight. She whips that napkin. It just <laughs> makes all kinds of noise. Hope I didn't get anyone in the first two rows there. I didn't practice that up here. I didn't realize it might be messy. But she's, she's just whipping them into shape. She gets those napkins so tight that when she drops them from a height of about three feet, they make a snapping noise. Okay? And she does that to the next one. Snap. 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 She gets all those napkins out. And, you know, people are starting to look at her while she's, she's doing all this. And all the time, Jesus is just sitting there kind of, you know, looking at the plate. When the napkin comes out, he admires how tightly wrapped it is and sets it down. And Mary, Mary, still, ah, looking at Jesus, looking at Jesus. It's like... Martha made all this racket, all this noise, all this way to try and get her attention. Eh, nothing. So finally, Martha does what anyone would do. Well, actually, she doesn't do what anyone would do. But let's just think about this for a moment. This whole scene in this, this Bible story. We, 
We never see people acting that way these days, do we? Uh, husbands, quit elbowing your wives, all right? Just stop it now, all right? And wives, quit pointing at your husbands. <laughs> uh, no, we, we, we never see people act this way. You know, when, when things aren't going the way that they expected, that, that they start throwing some sort of fits of some kind. This doesn't happen in our time. You know, I spent a whole week this week in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the Northeast Jurisdictional uh, Conference. And boy, did I get to see lots of fits. A lot of them. It was interesting. Someone would, would get up and say, well, my opinion is, and I think we ought to make everyone do this. And then someone from the totally opposite side of an opinion would come up and say, well, my opinion is I think we ought to make everyone do this. I mean, they were just slamming those pots and pans around all over the place in Lancaster. And there wasn't a bit of food being prepared in the jurisdictional conference. Not a bit. But there was a lot of racket because people disagreed. We never see this sort of stuff happen. We certainly wouldn't ever see it happen within a local congregation now, would we? No, people here don't ever disagree about what the most important thing to do is. And they never, ever, you know, start to make a little fuss and racket and, and noise about that. They never whip those napkins so tight that they make noise when they drop. Nah, that wouldn't happen here. Well, meanwhile, back in Mary and Martha's house, where Jesus is still sitting there admiring how clean the plate is in front of him, Martha continues to do what she shouldn't have done, which is go to the guest and complain to the guest about what is happening. You know, she could have just tiptoed over to Mary and said, Hey, Mary, how about helping me serve? But no, that's not what she does. She goes to the head of the table, to Jesus, and she says to Jesus, Have you seen all that I'm doing? Have I had to prepare all of this stuff by myself. Why don't you make my sister help me? Boy, it's so interesting how many personal pronouns Mary crammed into that one little phrase. She managed to talk about herself three times because, of course, this was all about her. Providing hospitality to her guests was all about her. And it was all about Mary, right? Isn't that what hospitality is all about? Us? Well, Jesus sits there for a little while. We don't know how long. Maybe he got up immediately and talked to, to Martha. I like to think he did something special. You know, you know, Jesus liked to do special things when he was teaching people. Had you ever noticed that? I mean, he, he, one time he got someone to pluck a coin out of a fish's mouth. Now, that's pretty dramatic, isn't it? All right? That, that's pretty good. I mean, one time he, 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 he started writing in the sand while these people were getting angry about something some woman had done somewhere. Jesus just starts writing in the sand, saying, okay, the one, without, uh, the one without sin, you go ahead and cast the first stone. Jesus liked to do these little object lessons. Remember one time he took a child and sat it in the midst of them and said, unless you're like this, you can't inherit the kingdom of God. Remember that? And then there's my personal favorite. In the time he, 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 took, he took bread, and he took wine, he said, this is my body and this is my blood. 
you share these things, remember, remember me. So I don't, I don't really know what special thing Jesus did here. We're told what he said, but I have a feeling I know. Or at least I have my theory as to what he did. I think Jesus sat there and, you know, admired the plate and that, that pencil-thin napkin-rolling job. And then he, he got up from his place. I think, I know it's not there, but I think he probably embraced Martha and whispered those words we read there. Martha, Martha, you're distracted by so many things. Mary's chosen what was good. That's not going to be taken from her. Yeah, we often read those words to Martha as some sort of chastisement about, you know, people getting things all wrong here. But really, all Jesus is doing was reminding Martha that, that the hospitality she was providing was something that was needed. She had just gotten distracted from what was most important, and that was the guests. So maybe in an embrace, maybe in, in talking directly to her, something happened. Martha remembered that she too was loved. She too was cherished by this one who sat at her table. She too was cared about. You know, I know we find ourselves at times wondering who's doing the right thing. Is it the person who seems to be looking and admiring and paying attention to to every single word, or is it the one who's out in service and trying to show love in, in so many ways? Sometimes we wonder who's doing the right thing, when really the only right thing is receiving the love of Jesus and sharing that back. That's what Mary was doing. That's what Jesus reminded Martha that she could have been doing if she weren't distracted. That's why I, I see that embrace. That's why I hear those words being whispered. Because Jesus wanted her to know. And I think Jesus wants us to know as well. There's, there's a lot of things we can we can do in this world. But one of those things is that we'll never out-love the one who loves us. You know? We're, we're not going to be able to out-love Jesus when it goes to showing our love to others. Jesus was willing to leave heaven, come to earth. You see... He's already got you beat right there, okay? He was willing to leave heaven, come to earth, be among us, listen to all the rattling pots and pans and, and people complaining about one another, and still he chose to love them all. Enough to go to a cross and die for you. The pot rattlers, the napkin rollers, the ones who sit quietly and listen to Jesus. The ones who get distracted. The ones who find what is good. Jesus died for you. So whatever you do to show your love back, whoever you, you go and love in Jesus' name, you're not going to be able to outdo it. So don't worry about that. 
Just worry that you keep your focus on what is good. Jesus, the guest in our lives. Amen? Amen.